Ionic Rare Earths, we're developing a magnet and heavy rare earth supply chain sourced from our Makutu Rare Earth project in Uganda, which is a large ionic absorption clay. China dominates the, uh, the rare earth supply chain. Um, the dominance is around the downstream processing and the conversion of those oxides to the value added metals, powders and magnets. Um, <clears throat> obviously, everyone's familiar with the thematic around EVs and offshore wind. Um, simply put, the requirement for magnet rare earths between now and the end of this decade is potentially an eightfold increase in magnet rare earths for EVs alone, with the potential for it to be replicated also in, in offshore wind turbines. So for ionic rare earths, we see a tremendous opportunity to take our Makutu rare earth project, uh, a project that's got a, a substantial amount of magnet rare earths, and not just NDPR, but we've also got uh, appreciable amounts of dysprosium and terbium to provide the right blend of, of magnet rare earths into these emerging markets uh, and emerging demand in North America and Europe. So with regards to our supply chain, we've got the asset at Makutu. Um, it's a large ionic absorption clay. We've recently announced a substantial increase in the mineral resource estimate. Now stands over 532 million tonnes at 640 ppm. Now that uh, head grade is low uh, as an ionic absorption clay. The benefit of the ionic absorption clay is that the primary rare earth minerals have already been weathered by the environment um, over millions of years. We have the rare earths existing in a clay in a chemical form, and we're able to recover the rare earths in a, in a mixed rare earth carbonate product. Um, very simply, low capital uh, development to a, a high payable intermediate product, which doesn't require the capital investment on the downstream. These are the type of assets that China has been able to develop a, a, a strong position in the supply chain of magnet and heavy rare earths. And they're extremely rare to find outside of um, southern China and Southeast Asia. We're looking at building a refinery. Uh, we are evaluating, completing a scoping study at the moment, um, a location analysis to look at potential jurisdictions where this type of asset has the most appeal for the downstream market. So we are sort of zeroing in on the potential for the US and Europe. Um, why are we doing it? Because we've got a basket that means that if we don't build that supply chain, the only downstream capability that exists today to process a product like this exists in China. So to enable us to be able to open up those markets, those new markets in, um, in North America and Europe, we're looking at building a refinery um, to be able to separate those, those rare earth elements into the individual oxides um, with the potential to then look at development of metals, powders and magnets with partners. Um, in addition to that, we've recently acquired a, a company here in the UK, um, a spin out from Queen's University Belfast. They've developed a technology for the separation and refining of, of rare earths and applied that for magnet recycling. So it's a unique process, it's a chemical process, a hydrometallurgical process. It's very unique in its ability to separate out the magnet rare earths from spent material, converting it back to high purity oxides which can then be deployed in new magnets. So it's very new compared to existing technologies and we think it creates a great opportunity for Ionic to be an early mover in meaningful magnet re uh, recycling over the rest of this decade. Um, our basket out of Makutu is a magnet and heavy rare earth dominant product. Um, about 73% of our basket is the value, um, the value attracting rare earth elements. Um, so the lanthanum and cerium are typically the, they make up the um, predominant com composition of many of the hard rock mineral concentrates. They essentially have zero value. With our basket, it's only 27%. 33% uh, of our basket is the magnet rare earths. And that 33% drives about 90% 90, 90 of the potential revenue of the project. Um, our corporate snapshot, um, these numbers are at the, the start of May. Um, obviously, we've all uh, experienced a bit of a pullback in the market. Um, we recently completed a, a capital raise. We raised 30 million, um, so we're well funded. Um, there's a lot of liquidity in our stock. Um, we've been basically turning over about one and a half uh, percent of our register 
uh, per day for the last three months. Um, so there's been tremendous appetite uh, and, and the story is starting to filter through um, and the market's starting to understand the unique appeal of what Ionic has got relative to the, the forecast demand that's coming. Um, so with regards to Makutu, a little bit more detail, we own 51% of, of the Makutu Rare Earth projects, uh, Project. We are working through an earning. We earn up to 60% on the completion of a feasibility study, which is due to be completed in October this year. Um, at that point, we will be submitting a mining licence application. We have a preemptive right over the other 40% of the project. Um, you know, we've got access to available infrastructure uh, immediately available to the site. We've got high voltage um, transmission, um, exporting hydroelectric power through Uganda out to Kenya. So we've got the ability to tie in directly to those, um, that supply. We've got roads and rail immediately available to the project site. Um, water, mobile phone communications is, uh, is already there. We're planning on a residential operation with some expat supervision. Um, so we've got everything available at our, at our fingertips for the development of Makutu. Um, so it's quite a fortunate location. Um, beyond the resource that we've announced, we've still got substantial exploration ground out to the east and the northwest. So this is a deposit that um, already has defined the potential for a 50 plus year life of mine um, with substantial upside to, to continue to grow. Um, the resource itself, um, we've drilled out 26 kilometres of our 37 kilometre long mineralisation trend. Um, typically, we've got three metres of cover with a clay zone sitting between five and 30 metres thick beneath it. So it's going to be a very low strip ratio, uh, very simple mining, free digging um, to, to extract and remove the, the, the ionic absorption clay mineralisation, which then gets processed via a heap leach. That heap leach is a simple salt desorption where we're washing the clay with uh, ammonium sulphate, which is a fertiliser. It's got very fast kinetics and um, the PLS, we simply do a very simple uh, precipitation step where we produce a mixed rare earth carbonate with a high payability for export. Um, talking about the downstream refinery and why we think it makes great sense for Ionic, um, when we look at the, the landscape for the downstream processing for a product like um, Makutu's, you know, it's completely dominated by China. Um, there are a number of light rare earth refining capability or, or refining operations um, in other jurisdictions, but where we see the greatest appetite and the greatest potential for our basket is in these new supply chains that are emerging in the US and Europe. Um, with regards to, I suppose, the value proposition that we see with Ionic, um, you know, we've got a tremendous asset um, with Makutu, low capital development, long life, producing the right basket, which is a high margin product. Um, we are looking at the vertical integration of that product into the supply chains and working with partners in the EV sector and also in a number of other areas such as defence and communications where we've got, you know, tremendous um, potential uh, partner buy-in. Uh, beyond that, we do have the second largest globally reported Scandium resource. So we are looking at the emerging Scandium market. Um, and, you know, with the, the acquisition of Seren Technologies, we're now in a position where we can play a meaningful first mover role in magnet recycling. Uh, so we are looking at expediting that with a potential demonstration plant in Belfast um, either later this, this year or, or early next year. So that's our story. Um, thank you very much.